talk to Fool sometime. This man towers over you, enormously fat and draped in gaudy robes. His expression is calm, stern even, as he regards the bloody mess spread across the floor and wall. The hooded figures on either side of him tense as you approach. He turns to inspect you, eyebrow lifted and raises his hand. His bodyguards relax watching you. In the space of a second, his eyes flick over you. He nods, apparently to himself, as if your presence has confirmed something he expected. What are you doing in the underbelly, falling star? And he knows who we are already. How do you know who I am? An odd question, he says, frowning. You fell from the sky like a comet and somehow survived. My people have been watching you since you set foot on the beach. He cocks his head. Now that I have answered your question, answer mine. What are you doing down here? Um, I'm looking for someone. The Sticher. Are you? He says. I know everyone in the underbelly and I am seeking someone as well. Perhaps we can help each other and we really search Matkina, of course. He turns his back on you, staring down at the vast pool of blood. This is all that remains of Weedle, one of my protégés. I had hopes for him, now they will never be realized. The underbelly is poorer without him, the rage beneath his voice cuts each word shorter and shorter. Bring me any information you find, help me discover the identity of his killer and you will be rewarded. He exhales sharply then turns around. The fury you glimpsed in him is buried once more. There's an assassin named Matkina, he says. She's known as the White Death. I have helped her find work in the past, but she has become erratic. If she's not involved, she might know who is. If you wish to help in this matter, ask her what she knows. The creature named Mappa may know where she is. You can count on me. I'm finding her anyway. Oh, I want to find her. I hope so, he says. Trustworthy ally allies are in short supply. Impitu says he was with you when the first murder occurred. Is this true? Yes, Folsom says he does not elaborate. Do you have any ideas about the killer's motive? I have suspicions, he says, the muscle on his cheek twitching. And I have enemies. It takes no imagination to conclude that this was meant to hurt me. He shakes his head, but the killer did not slit Weedle's throat and leave him for me to find. No, they spilled an ocean of his blood and scrawled nonsense on the walls. If this is a message for me, I cannot interpret it, Scan thought, as it suggests the killer is crazy. Which of my enemies are insane? Do you have any new insights on the killer's motives? If this murder was intended to hurt me, it has succeeded. It was meant to send a message, it failed. Um, I want to examine the murder scene behind you. First, Fulsome doesn't respond. He merely stares down at you, through you. I will not have you trample through this blood without cause, he says at last. So there had better be one. Scan thought, I don't need your help that badly, godling. Um... Well... The murderer may have left behind evidence. I won't know unless you let me look. He casts a doubtful glance behind him, pauses, then nods. Let her pass when she is ready, he tells the hooded figures at his side. They incline their heads. Hmm. Do you live in the underbelly? Not quite. He smiles like he's paying for it by the millimeter. I rarely sleep, so I need no bed of my own, but I have spent most of my life in these tunnels and grottoes. It's a good place, cruel and unforgiving, but good. His slow gaze sweeps over the underbelly. Sagas foolishly sends its undesirables here, as if it is worthless, but the underbelly is a place of hidden treasures, wise machines and kind mutants. If I had a home here, I would not regret it. Fulsome seems like a strange name for you. Yes, the big man says the name was a gift and somewhat of a witticism from a departed mentor many years ago. Before long, the name was the only one I was known by. Scan thoughts a true gift in light of the unfortunate nature of my given name. Thank you, 
goodbye. Well, let's examine that. Not much remains of Fulsam's former protégé beyond a vast, still pool of blood with a skinned hand at its center. Ugh, bloody circle is scrawled on the wall nearby. First inspect the hand. Flayed hand with long slender fingers lies palm up in the center of the pool of blood. The rest of the victim is missing. Rivulets of dried blood trail from the circle on the wall, stretching toward the crimson pool at your feet. Inspect the hand again. The fingers of the skinned hand at the center of the pool have curled slightly, but the scene is otherwise unchanged. Let's do this again. All right. Examine the bloody circle on the wall. Your hand reaches toward the streaks and bubbles of blood of its own accord, and an iron spike drives through your temples. You stand before a blank wall. Sickening purple-black light spills around the corner behind you. This is your temple, and you have been driven into a dead end by her. Blood seeps through the wall from the other side, drawing the familiar shape, frightened, confused. You trace the line, and a gate opens with a wet crunch. The vision collapses, but the memories are not done with you yet, it seems. Another bulges through your thoughts, closing around you. Surrender to the memory. Fresh blood streams over the circle, yanking you through the hollow at its center into the world beyond. Tumorous, throbbing clouds hang from a gray sky over a landscape riven by raw, crusted wounds. Jacked ruins are visible here, and they're like splinters embedded in blistered flesh. Many-legged things crawl through them, moaning against the stone, and though you are far away, you know they sense you. You can feel their minds spilling toward yours, seeking, tasting, joyful, hungry. You shove the horrific memory away from you, slamming your mind shut like a door and swallowing the knot of nausea in your throat. After seeing that world, the bloody pool at your feet seems almost mundane. We'll inspect the bloody circle again. It's immediately clear that the dashes and bleeding pinpricks decorating this circle are not random. This is a symbol, drawn with careful intent. Unfortunately, it means nothing to you. Before you can look away from the circle, a memory bulges through your thoughts and the memory isn't yours. Surrender again. And it's the same memory, all right. Taking enough damage to the intellect pool. Let's leave that and talk to Fulsome about what we've seen here, maybe. All right, nothing. nothing you to say to him. this lead down to the Sticha? And does M, M now opens the map. Ah, oh, that's, that's good. That's good. This will go somewhere. Or oh, someone is standing there. This will go up and maybe we should explore this area first before we leave the place, right? It seems like we could leave the place here. Not really. No, let's let's just go over there. It's okay. Let's see what this is about. Seems like there is a dead Sticha here. And the tentacles or a Nichtemeron or kind of dead body. You find a jumbled pile of large rocks at the end of this roughly hewn tunnel. The motionless limbs of a Stichus protrude from the mound. The rents in its carapace painted with dried ichor. Move the rocks to uncover the corpse. We'll try that with all our force. Success. The first rock is the hardest to shift. Once you warm to the task, you are nearly flinging them aside until you spot the Stichus's outstretched claw between two of the remaining stones. You carefully haul a few more to the side, exposing the corpse fully. It is huddled against the end of the tunnel. Examine the corpse. Clearly the creature was digging this tunnel when the roof collapsed and killed it. Its smaller claw is mangled and smashed, but apart from the crushed thorax and a few gashes in its carpus, 
The body itself is surprisingly intact. The creature's claws left furious gorges in the fallen rocks and surrounding walls. You realize that it intentionally collapsed the tunnel. It wanted to die. Examine this again. Other than the crushed thorax and mangled claw, the corpse is surprisingly intact. Right, step away. And what's here? Yeah, this thing wanted to die. Oh god. Interesting. Ah. And this is the direction of the Sticha, it seems. Now let's talk to Pelliai. This violet skinned visitant paces back and forth before the cavern's opening. It wears fine clothes that serve to accentuate the tall, thin crest on its head. A symbol has been painted on the crest, mirroring the insignia marked on its chest. Its clothes are finely tailored and well made. The name of the creature's race crawls to your mind. It's a Vargellan. This one has temporarily chosen to be female. Her bulbous eyes flash quickly around her surroundings before focusing directly on you. The council didn't send you that much is plain. Her voice is high and fruiting. You're aware that this cave isn't safe, I hope. What exactly do you want? This cave isn't safe. Not unless you trust the discretion of the Sticha. Those insectoid monsters that are prowling about. Most people are afraid of them. And who are you? An agent and negotiator dispatched here by the council. But that should be obvious from my clothing and my guards. What council do you serve? She gives you an incredulous look. The ruling council of the city, of course. The heads of the slave families. You must be new to Vegas, Vegas Cliffs. Very new. I was wondering... Uh, who are you again? An agent of the council, as I said. I was wondering what you're doing here. I am conducting... Conducting a diplomatic negotiation on behalf of the city. Unfortunately, I am not dealing with a reasonable species. The crest flutters irritably. irritably. I have made no progress at all. Days wasted in this miserable tunnel. And I have nothing to show my superiors. Well, maybe we can help. Depends on what you pay or what knowledge you have to give us. She looks you up and down, considering doubtful. But you might have other skills I can use. The circumstances call for a new tactic. And these levies cannot do what needs to be done. Nor can I. Vargellan nods. If you truly think you can help, let's put you to the test. She waves off the levies who flank her. Her gestures are short and choppy, sharp and irritated. These damnable sticha, she says. I speak to them. I offer, cajole, negotiate and threaten. Yet they persist in their digging, and every day another house on the cliffs above slips into the sea. If the digging does not cease, the city itself may crumble. So here is my request. Find a way into their lair, remove their precious eggs, and return them to me. These hostages shall ensure the future of the city above. Scan thoughts, and also turn a tidy profit if I could get them all. She pauses. If you can negotiate a lasting settlement, does not require such drastic measures. You may also pursue that method. But I've been trying for days without success. I may be able to help you. Good. We need to stop the Sticha before they bring down the entire substructure of the city. She pauses and lowers her voice. If you manage to infiltrate the lair, be sure to acquire all their eggs. I suspect they will have multiple clusters and we will need them all if you want to negotiate from a position of strength. Got to get them all, huh? Eggs, that is. <laughs> what does that remind you of? <laughs> she hands you a synth ball with a blinking device inside. Once you're in the lair, activate this. It will show you all the tunnels, the egg clusters and the sticha themselves. Better to know what you face before you charge ahead. And we gain the panoramic capture ball. Right. How do you suggest I enter the Sticha there? If I knew that, I would do it myself. Talk to the Stichas over there. Find some other way to infiltrate their tunnels. I don't care how you do it. I want results. 
And uh, what can you tell me about this thing? Filthy animals, scattering insects. Who can say if they're even sentient? First and foremost, they dig and they care nothing for the homes they destabilize or the lives that are lost when our buildings collapse. They do not speak the truth reliably, so we cannot know if they understand the damage they cause. She frowns, though I suspect that they do. Ask me your questions. Perhaps we shall find a way to deal with these monsters. Uh, how can I reach their lair? If I knew, I would go there myself. Sticher are quick to dispatch intruders, and I doubt they would take humans or Vargellans there of their own accord. Perhaps a construct of some sort? Oh. The, the, the man of the cold wastes or the woman down there? Perhaps perhaps a construct of some sort or a digging machine. But I know little of fabrication or manufacturing, so I will leave that for you to explore. Uh, where did they come from? Eyes wobble in frustration. If I knew, I would send them back there in a trice. Some years ago, perhaps decades, they simply appeared here. And they have been causing problems ever since. What are they doing here? I cannot imagine. They dig incessantly. They insist upon digging tunnels underneath the city, destabilizing the crag upon which Sagus Cliffs is built. Countless buildings have collapsed or fallen into the sea. More so than is ordinary based on the shoddy construction so many of our residents employ. The problem has stuck Cliffs Edge, especially many loyal citizens have perished. How do you communicate with them? Crest flutters as she hisses in irritation. I have not the faintest idea. I don't even know if they fully understand the truth. Perhaps the one that points at itself and chitters can help. I call it checked. It can mutter a handful of words and perform some sign language. I have tried to negotiate with it, but I have gotten nowhere. I had other questions. Um, can you tell me about yourself? She warbles deep in her throat. I am Pelai, Pelai, an accredited agent of the slave families. I act with a full faith and authority, and I am empowered to request your help in resolving the Sticha crisis. Uh, you mentioned the slave families. Who are they? She scoffs and then points to the sigil marked upon her breast. The slave families are the descendants of those brave souls who rose against the injustice of the previous rulers of Sega's Cliffs. Led by great Chilla, they cast down the tyrants and tore their families asunder. The faithful who stood with Chilla saw their service rewarded with stewardship of the city. The children carry on with this grand tradition. She bows, they have made me their agent. I'm looking for a pale woman named Matkina as well. The name is familiar and pale humans are rare. One would imagine I might recall someone of the description, Alice. I do not. The scan thoughts the white death. What does she want with her? Ah, so she's lying. Okay. You are familiar with Matkina, aren't you? She holds up her hands. Only by reputation. It may be that she found employment with my employers at one time. I know no more. Oh, thank you. So she's working for the city council, this Matkina. Before we talk to the Stiches, we want to explore uh, more of that. A hideous facade is carved into the rock. It depicts corpses, giant maggots, and a ghastly woman who feasts upon human limbs. And this would be the Cathedral of the Dendra or Hor, I'm sure. I don't want to go in there yet. First, let's talk to the to the Sticher. What's this about? This tunnel is blocked by debris, but it's loose enough that a burrowing creature could easily push its way through. Talk to the juvenile stiffers. Human, why you come here? Oh yeah, let's talk to Kekt. First, I'm in dire need of a pause, so thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please come back next time when we inquire and explore the Sticha lair here. See them walking around and maybe um, we can solve the strange suicide and help our friends.
friend the mutilated stickers on uh, the surface. So thank you for watching. Happy gaming to you. This is Emmanuel Cam signing out.